And guys who are worried about your body count are probably afraid you're gonna realize that they're not that good in bed. Ever since I heard at OnlyFans, I was like, right, that's what I'm gonna do. The day I turned 18, I just signed off and I was still in school. Like some people were like, you should have waited. I was not wasting any time. And what made you want to like really get into it? Was it more so the money side of it, the fact that you're always interested in the kind of stuff? I was just like, I thought that industry was quite fun, but I didn't really want a normal job. I wasn't sure if I wanted to do like actual And obviously I heard at OnlyFans, I was like, that is perfect. And you wear leggings, do not wear them the way a normal girl would wear them, AKA a 40 year old mom. Wear them like Claudia and Devora would. Mm -hmm. Hiked as far up as they can go, literally yep. giving you camel toe and ass toe. Like <laughs> legit, like yank them up in between both your cheeks. So it's basically like you're naked, but with a colored legging on over right. top. Literally, I, like you want to show everything. Haram. We now live in an era called creamology hoflation. And by definition of hoflation, it states that the modern man is expected to work five times as harder than their grandfathers. And the modern woman, they are one trillion times worse than our grandmothers. Because as we all know, the modern women out here are getting ran through just like the yellow light. Yeah. How many I, I gotta go see this. It was like 16 and they all splooged all over me. They splooged all over me. When was this? What year are we talking? 2018. Okay. Was it for you or for a company? It was for a company. 16. Wow, that's wild. What? I did the record. How did you feel oh. when they approached you with this this idea? Oh, I want more guys. It was like 14 was like the total, but I was like, no, get all of them. 16 is like as the many good as number? you can get. Wow. Because I wanted to push the limit for the girl who did it previously. Oh. We are more alike oh. than and was, the, was this like a site that specifically does this type of content or what? Kinda, yeah. Meanwhile. Last week I delved here into recent data from the CDC suggesting major problems with regard to the mental health of our adolescents, surges in depression and suicidal ideation, especially true for our girls. This week I found cause to worry about young men. This headline from The Hill, it caught my eye. Most young men are single, most young women are not. The story reported that as of 2022, Pew Research Center found 30% of US adults are neither married, living with a partner, nor engaged in a committed relationship. Nearly half of all young adults are single. Now look at these numbers, 34% of women, twice as many, a whopping 63% of men. What explains that? I pulled the Pew study and I read with interest. Turns out since 2019, the share of single men who say they're looking for dates or a relationship has declined from 61% to 50%. In 2018, 28% of men ages 18 to 30 reported they'd had no sex in the past year compared with 18% of women of that age. The Hill Report said men in their 20s are more likely than women in their 20s to be romantically uninvolved sexually dormant, friendless, and lonely. They stand at the vanguard of an epidemic of declining marriage, sexuality, and relationships that afflicts all of young America. Among the causes, among the factors, a reliance on social media and online porn. But also, more young women are hooking up with each other or dating and marrying slightly older men, and heterosexual women are getting more choosy. Other troubling statistics about men come from a 2021 study from the Survey Center for American Life. They found the share of men who have six or more close friends, which in 1990 was 55%, by 2021 had shrunk by half. Meanwhile, those with literally zero close friends, which stood at 3% in 1990, has zoomed to 15%. I am absolutely stunned with the information that has been presented by CNN. Now, if CNN is covering this topic, that's how you know that it's starting to become a shit show out there. An expert quoted by The Hill said this disconnect can have catastrophic consequences for young men. Quote, in the worst case scenario, the young American man's social disconnect can have tragic consequences. Young men commit suicide at four times the rate of young women. Younger women are largely responsible for rising rates of mass shootings, a trend that some researchers link to their growing social isolation. Well, those words reminded me of a conversation that I had over a year ago right here on CNN with NYU professor Scott Galloway. 
But the issue is when you have a group of men, the lower half of attractiveness of men and online dating, which has doubled now, it's about half of relationships and the top 20 percent of men in terms of attractiveness get about 60 percent of the interest. You end up with a group of men that are more prone to conspiracy theory, more prone to misogynistic content, more prone to believe not believe in climate change. So these this is the American story. If it's written with a pen whose ink is failing young men, does does not end well. This is an existential crisis, failing young men. As always, Professor Galloway was prescient. Back with me now is Scott Galloway. He's a professor of marketing at NYU Stern School of Business. He's a serial entrepreneur. He's the host of the Professor G podcast and author of multiple best-selling books, most recently, Adrift, America in 100 Charts. Scott, thanks for returning. Hasn't the advantage always been to those with the looks and or the money? What's changed? Uh, first off, Michael, I just want to say thank you for uh, raising this issue a year ago when a lot of media um, companies were afraid to talk about this for fear of its being pro-men was somehow being anti-women. Look, this is returning to the natural order of things. For the majority of history, a small percentage of men have had the majority of the mating opportunities. But in America, we decided to make a huge investment in what would probably be the greatest innovation in history, and that is in the middle class. From 1945 to 1947, 7 million men returned from war were discharged from the service, and we decided to give them the GI Bill, uh, subsidized mortgages. Uh, we saw education rates come from 5 to 45 percent. They were valued, and we had such a strong a manufacturing base that you had massive uh, marriage and household formation. And some men were seen as more economically and emotionally viable. And you've seen the reverse happen with the out offshoring of much of our manufacturing base, with a society that quite frankly doesn't value young men. When we talk about problems with people of color or women, we see it as a systemic societal problem. When we see problems or the stats that you just mentioned, we see it as accountability or the men just need to level up. But married households and household formation are better citizens. They vote. They save at twice the rate. They're less likely to commit crimes. If you were born in the 90s, you know for a fact that that era was the best time growing up because there wasn't any social media. I honestly feel really bad for millennials and Gen Z because they will have no idea what it's like growing up in a normal society. And sadly, this is happening in different countries as well. Our world has evolved so much in the worst way possible. And then, Scott, you toss in the influence of social media and how relationships today, they don't come from, in our era, happenstance and mingling, right? They, they come from swiping, and that further accelerates this issue. Am I right? Oh, it's it's been the chaser to it. I mean, to have to have an honest conversation about this, we have to be honest. And that is that men and women have different mating criteria. One quarter of women, excuse me, one quarter of men saying economic viability is a key criteria in a mate. Three quarters of women say that is important. And when you're on a two dimensional format where now it's one and two relationships begin online, it used to be one and four just a few years ago, it gets distilled down to a small number of criteria. Specifically for men, it's does she look attractive? And specifically for men, is he, is he able to signal his ability to garner resources in the future? An average attractive male on Tinder gets swiped less than 1% of the time. And there's three men on Tinder for every one woman. So you've distilled it, you've taken out one of the key components of mating dynamics, and that is vibe, humor, body language, pheromones, the ability to be, quite frankly, a little bit persistent in the pursuit of a romantic relationship. We have no third places anymore, no places to meet. People aren't going to bars, they aren't sports league, they aren't going to church, they aren't even going to work. So it gets distilled down to very one or two dimensional attributes. And the reality is women are much choosier than men and they can apply those screens and they allocate all of their attention to a small number of men that results in just essentially at the end of the day, a lack of opportunities. Chris Williamson, Chris Williamson. From the data and statistics provided, I can see why a lot of men are walking away from dating because the majority of men are tired of being walking ATMs and emotional therapists. Remember Kings, don't be her therapist, be the reason why she sees a therapist. And it's not that men are scared of getting married, 
they're just scared of getting divorced. I remember I was talking to a guy who was recently divorced. He told me, and this stuck out to me like a sore thumb. He said the most loneliest he ever felt were sharing a house and his resources with somebody who did not appreciate or care about him. Be careful who you fall in love with, gentlemen, because the majority of these girls, they're not looking for love. They are looking for help. Thumbs up. Summarized it perfectly. Call it the high heels effect. In the last 40 years, more women have graduated from college than men, and they're not interested in mating with non-college grads. They now own more homes, single women, than single men. So what you have is women say they won't date anyone shorter than them, 50% of them. Effectively, what you have metaphorically over the last 40 years is women have been getting taller and taller, and men have been getting shorter and shorter. How many of us have said, I know a ton of great single women, they can't find a date? That's not true. They can't find a date. They can't find a man they find economically or emotionally viable. If we don't make a massive investment in young people and make more economically and emotionally viable men, we're going to see a lack of household formation. We're going to see a decline in the middle class. And we're going to see, quite frankly, just a lot of young men who are terrible citizens. So is the answer to fix this economically and who will champion this conversation? You, you felt obliged to compliment me at the outset because we had engaged on this a year ago and here I am revisiting it. And I read into that the fact that you think that it's politically incorrect even to have this dialogue. When you're seen as advocating for men because of the 300,000 year head start we've had, it seems somehow as anti-female. There's a lot of very unfortunate misogyny online that is masquerading as being pro-men. A lot of TikTok celebrities who talk about advocating for men, it's just thinly veiled misogyny. What do we need? We need more freshman seats in colleges. We need a massive investment in vocational training. We need to figure out a way to get more permitting for housing so young people can afford housing. We need to recognize our economic policies, literally allocate wealth from young people to old people. The percentage of wealth that young people control under the age of 40 has been cut from 12% to 6%. These are concerted, deliberate decisions. We did away with the child tax credit. We don't wanna make it any easier for people to have kids but seniors just got their largest cost of living adjustment increase in history. We have made the decision to make it harder and more expensive for people to find each other, for people to mate, and for people to have children. And without children, we turn into Japan and Italy, and that is we go into population decline, and our economy goes into, into decline. We are about to become a society. By the turn of the century, there will be eight times as many people over the age of 60 and half as many kids under the age of five. Nursery schools will become these strange situations with old people staring through fences at these creatures they don't see in the wild called children. Is this the world we want? Do we want a lack of kids? Do we want a lack of ability to create households? The happiest, most proper, prosperous, most purposeful people in America are middle class families. And we have made a concerted decision to punch it in the gut and make it harder for that type of family formation. And we're going to lose prosperity and we're going to lose purpose. This is all happening due to the rise of OnlyFans, weak men, beta male simp manginas, and feminism. Because remember, if you throw away traditional core values, we will start to see society fall apart. And gentlemen, on that note, that's it for today's video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. <laughs> Bounce, 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 bounce